Hey guys and gals, Malkuth1974 back at you with another tutorial for Space Engineers. Today we're going to continue our power coverage and we're going to cover one of the new blocks. It's called the Hydrogen Engine. So, let's first get straight what you actually need for the Hydrogen Engine. First, you need hydrogen, which is made with ice. So you need to drill some ice, pick it up, and it actually needs to be converted to hydrogen. So how you do that is you get a O2 generator. If you go into your list of blocks that you can make, you go O2 and it'll come up there and you just put it into your bar down there and that's how you get the O2 generator. You place it down and you put the ice in it, whatever you just got into it like that. You put the ice in there and you obviously need power to get it all to run. So, unfortunately, with running the, uh, the hydrogen generator, you kind of need a pre-existing power source. And for that, let's take a look over there. I have some, <coughs> sorry about that, I have some windmills running over there. They're actually off right now, but I have some windmills running over there that gave me my pre-existing power source. And I also had some O2 generators over here. And I already did the liberty of doing some ice uh, ice sculpting, I guess you can tell here, just to just to kind of give me a head start on it. You guys will have to do the same thing, whichever way you do. But you do need the ice to make into hydrogen, and you do need an O2 generator to uh, uh, convert that ice to hydrogen. Next thing you'll need is one of these things. It's a hydrogen tank. If you go into G again, and you just type in hydro. Hydro, you can actually come up with everything. You'll see the hydrogen engine, you'll see the hydrogen thrusters, which we're not going to be doing anything with today, and the hydrogen tank. You do have a, a large one and a small one. That goes, the small one goes on the vessels. The same thing goes for your hydrogen engine. You have this, the large one, and you have the small one for things like rovers. All right, guys, so we're going to lay down one of these engines here, hydrogen engines. I'm going to make sure it's kind of lined up here. Uh, do remember that it only has one oh, I fell off the end it only does have one entrance point for it so do keep that in mind when you're setting this up I'm gonna put it just like that and then I'm gonna get some conveyor belts here or conveyor uh, tubes I should say and we're gonna do our thing for that there we go and one more just like that so we're hooked in and last but not least, I'm glad this actually happened. So we hooked it in. We have green lights everywhere, but nothing is happening. What's going on here? Why is why is this not working? Well, one of the things you can do is actually turn on and off uh, the the motor, and if that doesn't work. We can actually, let's see, do I have, I must have this on stockpile, yeah, so that's why that doesn't work. So, so in this case, that wasn't what's the problem, but if you do have a problem where your hydrogen engine isn't working, turn it off and on to see if that helps. Another thing you can do, let me get my uh, character tool here back, is you can uh, grind it down a little bit. Only this again. This is only if it's not working. This is things you can try to make it work. You can grind down past the functional hack line and rebuild it, and it will most likely kick on. So again, the reason why it's not working in my case is that I have my hydrogen tank set to stockpile, and that means that the tank is going to keep everything and grab everything it can for hydrogen. So what we need to do is we need to shut that off. But first, I do want to show you one last thing that might happen if you're using your hydrogen engine in a survival type scenario. I'm going to go to the control panel. I'm going to shut those turbines off. So now I have no power. So let's say you were building a grid and uh, you built the hydrogen engine, you built the, tu you built the tubes, and say for, for whatever reason you're hooked right directly into uh, your O2 generators and not one of these but nothing's light, lighting up. Well, the problem is obviously that your conveyor system, which when it's yellow like this, is not transporting any type of hydrogen to the engine to get it because it has no power. So a good way to 
and this works on when you're making like ships and stuff like that a good way to uh, kickstart your system is to go just like that now you see that my, my conveyor tubes turned green again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of uh, stockpile mode and we're still not getting anything so here we go we'll do th we'll do this again on off and that actually worked that time so our tank just filled up I'm going to shut it off for a second so this is what I want you also to note you do not technically need a tank to run this engine because it has its own internal tank in it Fuel and it critical. will take 500,000 liters of hydrogen uh, uh, in that tank. This big tank for the large grid actually will take uh, 5 million liters of uh, hydrogen. So just keep that in mind. And there's one more test I want to show you guys that is pretty interesting. So we do have a um, let me get rid of this battery. We don't really have too much of a power draw on our system right now. Right now, our current output of this is only 16 kilowatts. Its max output is 5 megawatts. That's what makes this engine pretty cool because it's a pretty good battery charger. And I'm going to show you that right now. But it makes a very poor base, uh, base power system. I'll get into that in a, in a little bit. So let's keep this an eye on this. Right now we are putting out 16 kilowatts and we're barely using any power, which is pretty good. But 16 kilowatts is nothing compared to what this max output is of 5 megawatts. So let's up that a little bit. But first what I want to do is I want to put this back into stockpile, stockpile mode so we're not taking any hydrogen out of that. So now we should start going, yeah, so now we're actually going down that 15 kilowatts is is using uh, you know it's it's gonna last for a long time if we only needed to, r to run 15 kilowatts uh, so let's put the power draw on that pretty good and the best way to do that is to add a battery again and let's take a look at what's going on now so now we are currently outputting pretty much our maximum at 4.9 megawatts uh, per second because our, our maximum is 5 megawatts. So if we take a look at this, look how fast it's going down. Uh, that doesn't seem like it's going to be a, a long time. So let's kind of look at the how fast this is going down. If we kind of look at this, uh, the thousands here, where, where I'm pointing at, actually looks like it's going down. It's just like a clock. It's going, and it, and it most likely is, because it's done by per tick. But uh, it looks like it's going down like a clock. So it looks like it's using 1,000 liters per second to run this at, again, its max output. So if we do the math on this, it takes it holds 500,000 liters. It's doing 1,000 uh, liters per second. Average result, let's do the math in my head. Uh, what is that, eight minutes, Eight, eight point four minutes, something like that. So let's also figure out what that is in ice. So the conversion of ice to hydrogen is one to 10. So 500,000 liters on a one to 10 that means we're going to use up 50, we're going to, it took us 50,000 ice to actually fill this up, if I have my conversions right. So let's also go back to here, and we'll look at this. So this is 5 million liters, which means it's 500,000 ice to fill that up. So both of these combined, 500,000, 50,000, we're looking at uh, 550,000 ice to fill all these up. We're getting 8 minutes out of this, or 8 point yeah, like eight minutes, something like around there. That's that's probably a little bit low, but eight minutes, and that means if this has five million, that has five hundred thousand. That means this is going to get about an hour and what twenty-eight hour and twenty-eight minutes out of it, including this eight minutes. So we're looking at oh, like roughly an hour and 38 minutes, hour and 40 minutes. My, my brain ain't working correctly here. You guys can correct me on that. So again, that's that's a, quite a lot of ice you have to mine to actually get that amount of ice. And I did this quickly. I just kind of threw this together. This is what I was doing to get my ice. <laughs> and it's not even enough to fill Fuel that critical. tank. So you can tell that this thing burns through ice at an incredibly, incredibly crazy rate. And we're already at 56% here. 
just trying to charge this battery which we we still have 22 minutes to charge that full battery which means that this by itself cannot fully charge one battery so in a nutshell this is how you get a hydrogen engine running in a nutshell that is what it's going to cost you to run the hydrogen engine if you're just running the hydrogen engine with its 500,000 internal liter tank it's going to cost you 50,000 ice converted into hydrogen, which is, fi which is uh, 500,000 liters, and you're going to get eight minutes out of it. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have actually done any ice mining before, but when you're starting out and just kind of uh, doing your thing, that is not an easy, easy thing to achieve because you have a small little, you have a small little um, drill and it really messes things up so did I cover everything let's shut this off all right so let's go over one last thing that the hydrogen engine is good for and give me a second to set this up all right this crazy contraption is my my quick throw together rover that I put together here now if you look at it we have no power I have the hydrogen engine there it's not even hooked up to the cockpit I got the cockpit I have a tube going to a cargo container and I have an O2 generator up there let's see if I can do my thing I'm going to put some ice into the leading cargo container obviously again this is the same problem we had before I have no batteries so nothing's running right now so you have to do the thing where you jump start it so let's go to batteries again I'm going to use the small batteries. These are the new ones that have been added to the thing. I'm going to put that on there. And then all of a sudden, everything comes alive. And so does in that little engine that could there. So let's take a look at that engine in here. Go to the control panel. That is the small engine, by the way. The hydrogen engine. It's filling up pretty good. I have only one, believe it or not, I only have one small, uh, one O2 generator on there. And it's actually... Uh, keeping up with that let's take a better look here hydrogen engine it's gonna fill it so the small hydrogen engine it only takes 1600 liters to uh, uh, of an internal tank and we're only at 14.9 it's going up quite 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 good its current output is 200 kilowatts its max out output is 500 kilowatts so that means that the, you're actually getting a net gain when you're converting your ice to hydrogen. That's crazy, number one. Oh, by the way, it takes two O2 generators to keep up with the large one. I forgot to mention that, so I just figured I'll, I'll mention that now. Two O2 generators can keep that running as long as the O2 generators have uh, ice. And it's a very similar, a very similar um, conversion rate. I believe um, this one does five megawatts. And I think uh, an O2 generator costs, the large one costs 500 kilowatts to run. So two of them is one megawatt, means that, which means that you get a four megawatt a surplus of energy from that conversion, which is crazy. It's against all laws of everything. Uh, the hydrogen engine is a good choice for the rover because Fuel the rover critical. does not have all that much, uh, all that much power output unlike a flying vessel which is a completely different situation and you'll have a very hard time running a flying vessel like uh, atmospheric thrusters with one of these because it just can't output enough uh, output enough of your uh, power output to keep up with just one engine let alone you know seven of them so keep that in mind you'd have to have batteries and all that stuff but anyway let's let's jump in the cockpit let's look down down here where's my oh I don't have it so look down where my energy output is look what it says for how long my energy is gonna last four years and I drive a little bit and you know it's two years it kind of goes it kind of goes off whoa whoa ooh, baby I need to I haven't obviously I haven't adjusted anything yet for this so uh, I just wanted to show you guys the crazy amount of um, power you'll get out of your rover. So the engine, the hydrogen engine, is absolutely a good choice for your rovers. And 
I highly suggest you use them for your rovers. Better than anything in the game, really, if you think about it, other than if you throw a, a fully charged battery on there, obviously, but um, it's, 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 it's free power and you can stop. Fuel. And if you do, you know, you do spend three years in this game playing, you can just get some more ice, throw it in there, and you're all set. So, I hopefully I covered, you know, all the basic stuff in the beginning to get you guys started on how these work. Hopefully I covered uh, how bad they are and how good they are. Hopefully we covered, we, we filled you up with enough information on how much ice this uses to actually try to run a base. Imagine trying to run a base. It's five megawatts of power, but you have six refineries running and you know six assemblers running. You'd be sucking up that much power easily, that five megawatt power easily with that setup. And with just this engine, that would only run you eight minutes of time. With this, if you add one of these into the mix, it'll run you about you know an hour and 40 minutes of the time but you're gonna be sitting there mining all day just ice just to keep up with it and you won't be able to mine anything else to uh, to keep those refineries running anyway I mean that's quite a lie this setup would actually work pretty good on Europa the ice moon because you can do a drill setup like this and do that all day long and you will have uh, cool things but you know it, it has its uses and it has, does not have its uses I do think it's pretty good for charging batteries as qu quickly maybe in conjunction with solar panels and batteries um, you want to get your batteries charged up as quick as you can for a nighttime nighttime excursion so you can know you can fill this up with 50,000 ice or whatnot uh, convert it with the O2 generators and you can get uh, you know like you can fill like a half a battery with that with that not including what your solar panels are doing so I mean there's there's a few things here and there it could be used for you know like eight minutes of emergency power if something goes down that way you can kind of work you can kind of work kind of fast to get that get that in eight minutes to get whatever happens to your power back up and running um, so those are so, so those are some of the good ideas for it for now but yeah there I hope this video helped you guys kind of went long on it I didn't really want to go that long but this this is kind of one of those complicated ones so it's Malkuth 1974. We'll see you later. Malkuth out.